You're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul. Check, check, one, two. Look like a little country. Some rock and roll and blues. Cause we sure love playing for good people like you. Let me know if you can hear me. Check, check, one, two. Welcome to Music Local and Sustainable, the radio show that features discussions with and the music of local musicians. I am your host, Dave Lake. Tonight, I'm at Jazzed talking with Trey Gurley, best known as a local interpreter of songs of Frank Sinatra on Thursday nights here at Jazzed. But you can catch him in a variety of different venues, singing songs ranging from the Great American Songbook to pop songs to show tunes to Christmas carols. Welcome, Trey Gurley. Hey, Dave. Good to be with you, man. Tell me a little bit about your musical journey. Oh, man, I'm a normal southern boy. I was born here in Savannah, or born in Florida, actually, but grew up in Savannah. Raised in the church, so I grew up in the choir. I did band in high school was in chorus and uh, theater, and so that's kind of how I got involved in music in general, that nice well-rootedness there. And what instrument did you play in band? Saxophone, alto saxophone, and did all the way through college, in fact, in jazz band. I played the baritone saxophone in jazz band, and a little soprano here and there. Uh How would you characterize yourself as a singer? I don't know. Maybe soulful would be the best way to describe it. Uh, Since I can sing, or I like to sing a bunch of different varieties of music, I like to think that's the thing that they all have in common, is they're all very soulful, you know, Sinatra soulful, and in any song he sang, especially ballads, or any pop song that I like to sing, if it's something like Otis Redding or James Brown that's legitimate soul, that's probably my favorite kind of music to sing, I would say. Well, when I think Trey Gurley, I think, The Great American Songbook. Right. And, or how would you characterize those songs? That, that was my characterization. How, do you, how would you characterize those songs? You know, I did a lot of musical theater and theater, um, and I was in a band, and a, a regular, like a Christian rock band when I was in high school for several years where I played guitar and sang and did all that, too. And Sinatra did not come for me until maybe 15 years ago through another friend of mine who was a musical theater actor and was doing a show about Sinatra on Off-Broadway. And he introduced me to Sinatra. I had never heard any Frank Sinatra song until the day that Frank Sinatra died. It was the first time I ever heard a Frank Sinatra song. So that's when I went home and asked my roommate who this guy Frank Sinatra was when I was living in New York. So I can't can't really characterize myself as a standard, or I don't think of myself as a standard singer. I just think of that as that phase of my life. I discovered this new type of music and discovered that I could sing it and that I enjoyed singing it. So I just kind of stuck with it when I moved back here to Savannah. There weren't that many male singers singing this kind of music, so it was just perfect for me to try to give it a shot and see if that would work in my repertoire. And it just stuck. I mean, and I love doing it and going to keep doing it, I I guess. (laughs) as long as people keep listening. Now you branch outside of Frank Sinatra as well. Right. With some of the classic Mercer songs. Right. Well, what do you find in the lyrics of, of that 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s? Oh song? gosh, the, the true tune smiths as far as lyricist goes, which is, wow, it's hard to beat a, a Gershwin tune, isn't it, lyrically? I mean, or even a Mercer tune, it's just so beautiful to, to listen to. So that sticks with you when you're singing it night after night. Here at Jazz, I perform by myself, so I have to use background tracks. and That can be difficult because it's only you up there. You don't have another musician to play off of. The, the band's not going to change how they play it. It's going to be played the same every time. So the only variation is me and my emotion, and if I can still sing the song and mean it. Uh, or else then it, it's boring to watch, isn't it? Just somebody up there like singing. It would be karaoke then, wouldn't it? Which I'm accused of often, but I, I don't look at it as karaoke. It's, it's just that I don't have a band here with me. But a, as you know, I perform with live musicians all the time, so people just hear me perform at jazz. You're only seeing one facet of, of what I really like to do, you know, uh, which is just music in general. I'd rather be known as a, a musician or a singer 
you know, than the Sinatra guy, although that doesn't suck, does it? Not at all. Mm -hmm. You you mentioned the backup soundtrack that you have here at Jazz. Right. When when I hear it, I I immediately think Nelson Riddle. I mean, I really think some of the classic arrangements that accompany Sinatra. True. Where on earth did you get that? Oh, man, it was a guy, when I first started looking for tracks, the only tracks I could find, and this is, like I said, 13, 14 years ago, where they sound like a really bad MIDI keyboard, 80s style. And I found this one guy online who had a big band, and he had all the original charts, Nelson Riddle charts, Billy Mays charts, and he was recording those with his band. And so he was selling either the music you could buy for your band, the sheet music, or you could buy the track with the vocal missing if you wanted. He was just doing a recording of his band doing it. And they're spot on, and that's why they sound great. And so I, I think I must have bought 50 songs from him. And I remember him giving me a really good deal because he thought it was cool that I was sing- going to be singing it and that I was so young. Uh, I think he thought that was nice. But I've used those this whole time pretty much, and I've, I don't think I've really bought that many new tracks. I've bought some here and there that were like fitting in the same genre that would work in this room, like Harry Connick tracks or in addition to the Sinatra-style stuff or Michael Buble, Jamie Cullum, things like that. But, but yeah, I, I lucked out on that one, man. I get asked that all the time about those tracks, especially from other singers. They're good. When do you get a chance to sing with a big band? I've only got to do it on with Jeremy Davis here when he used to have more than one singer on stage with him, or even now on occasion, it'll pop me in here and there. Or, and then you, when you get to sing with a, a band that big, it, it, it's, ama- it's an amazing experience, but it's not something that happens for me every day. So even here in this little room, I can get a little taste of that a little bit. <laughs> Once a week, it's nice. And I was interested to find out that Frank Sinatra played such a large role in those arrangements. Oh, yeah, man. I just read last year that the Sinatra estate was getting ready to unearth a lot of his recordings. Because when he would go into the studio, he would just let the tape roll and pay for all that tape. And a lot of it's never been heard. They just put it back in, it's just back in a room somewhere that nobody's listened to since the day it was recorded. There's like hundreds of hours of this. Um, that's the stuff I want to listen to. I want to hear him in the studio as a, a director and a producer. I think that's the, the key to how you get some of the sounds that he had. How did he direct Nelson Riddle in, in, the, in the room? Just watching him sing, you know, he's one of the few singers that can walk out on a stage and you're just captivated watching him. He can just stand there and sing. He does, he's not too extravagant in his movements. He can just stand there and sing and you listen to what he does. and. So I don't really try to emulate him in any way, but if I would say I, I would take something from him, it is his carefulness of phrasing and listening to the lyric and singing the lyric like you know what you're talking about. Just not singing it to sound like something else, but singing it every time like you mean it. And that can be challenging. Um, it can be challenging not to sound like him. So you'd be surprised to know that I probably haven't heard Frank Sinatra sing any of the songs that I sing in a really long time because I'm terrified of copying him. Because I could do that when I first started, if I listened to recordings of myself, when I first started doing it. I could tell I was really trying to just copy him vocally, but that's because I didn't know what I was doing. I never sang that kind of music before, so. I was like, oh, I'll just sing it just like him, and it'll be okay. So now, I, even now, I'm trying to find what, what is my voice. And so I think, I think that's why I do so many different kinds of music or want to collaborate with so many different musicians too. It's because it brings out me naturally and not just sing this Sinatra song, you know. Here is Trey Gurley singing the Bart Howard song, Fly Me to the Moon, made famous by Frank Sinatra. Fly me to the moon, let me play among the stars, let me see what spring is like on Old Jupiter and Mars And other words Won't you hold my hand In other words Come on and kiss me Why don't you fill my heart with song Let me sing forevermore You are all that I long for All I worship and the door In other words Please be true Oh, in other words Baby, I love you Hey
me to the moon Let me play among the stars Let me see what spring is like On old Jupiter and Mars And other words Won't you hold my hand In other words Come on and kiss me Why don't you fill my heart with song? Let me sing forevermore. You are all that I long for, all I worship and adore. And all the words, please be true. Tonight, I'm at Jazzed, talking with Trey Gurley. What are you looking for when you sing this, those songs from that Great American Songbook? Sincerity? Does that sound silly? I think when I sit down with other musicians like Jared Hall, who's a, who I enjoy playing with all the time, um, we do gigs together, and so I find myself asking him, tell me, let's make a list of some songs that you would like to hear me sing, you know what my voice sounds like. Introduce me to some some of those tunes that either you think I know, I, we both know it, but I've never sang it, or something I've never heard of. What was the song you brought up the other day I'd never heard of called? Uh, Two Cigarettes in the Dark. Well, just that phrase alone, I was like, oh man, we've got to do that song, it sounds great. And it's just beautiful lyrics, but one of those songs that you know you're going to pop into a a jazz club and somebody's singing that song, chances are nobody's ever heard that song. Or the only person who's going to know it is someone who's either really old or they're a musician. But that keeps me on my toes because, see, I've never heard anyone sing that song except for Jared Hall. So that's the only reference I have, uh, which is a good one. He's got a great voice. But yeah, so it, goes, it just circles around to what I was saying before about just surrounding yourself with people that know you and your voice. And I, I love to get people suggestions about what would you like to hear me do because I could do the same thing over and over probably but keep it fresh man yeah do you have some favorites among those songs anything by Cole Porter the Gershwin brothers here is Trey Gurley singing the Cole Porter song night and day this is from Trey's the good life album Night and day, you are the one Only you, neath the moon or under the sun Whether near to me or far It's no matter, darling, where you are I think of you Day and night, night and day Why is it so That this longing for you Follows wherever I go and the roaring traffic's boom The silence of my lonely room I think of you Day and night Night and day Oh, under the height of me There's no such a hungry Burning inside of me And its torment won't be through Till you let me spend my life Making love to you Day and night Night and day Oh, 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 oh,
another one Only you Neath the moon or under the sun Whether near to me or far It's no matter, darling, where you are I think of you Day and night Night and day Oh, why is it so That this longing for you Follows wherever I go And the roaring traffic's boom And the silence of my lonely room I think of you Day and night Night and day Oh, under the height of me There's an old such a hungry yearning Burning inside of me And it's torn and will be through Till you let me spend my life Making love to you Day and night Night and the most beautiful song to sing ever is What a Wonderful World. Uh, I don't sing that song too too often, special occasion, because I think it's kind of special and I don't want to, it's one of those you don't want to get tired of, like I'm going to sing it again a million times. Here is Trey performing What a Wonderful World with Kristen King harp, Bill Smith guitar, and Linus Inoxen string bass. Much more 
songs from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and Sinatra. Right. You sing a wider variety of songs, like Ryan Adams. Yeah. You know, like I said, I was playing guitar when I was 15, so I was playing Otis Redding songs and James Taylor and things like that long before I, Sinatra even came into mind. Um, my, and my wife is, a much like yourself, a music appreciator. She loves all different styles of music, but she's a real... For lack of a better term, a hippie at heart, where she likes really folk music, which, as you know now, we're living in a time where that's like the hippest kind of music. Um, and she was the person who turned me on to Ryan Adams when we used to work together many years ago. Ryan Adams, I love listening to him. Uh, Iron and Wine is another favorite of mine. So I love to sing those, and I do it, uh, if nothing else, I do it here once a week at jazz. But for a while, I was doing that more than I was doing standards, kind of on purpose just to get known in the community as a musician more instead of a, like I said, that guy who can just sing that kind of music. It's different when you can sit down at an instrument and play it or pick it up and play it and sing a song and they're like, oh wow, that's completely different than what I thought he was capable of. But the people that have known me for a long time say, oh, it's nice to see you put the guitar back on again. So it could be like that too. But yeah, it's just, and musicians are like that, aren't they? I think they just want to play music all the time and no matter what the capacity. Uncommon Collective, perfect example of that with Kristen King, just putting a pairing of music, all these musicians together that don't normally work together and seeing what we could do. And uh, what a great experience, man. I love that. That's my favorite kind of experience. And here is Trey performing the Henry Mancini, Johnny Mercer song, Moon River, with Kristen King on the harp and Bill Smith on the guitar from an Uncommon Collective concert. Thank you. 